Kwai kwai, Anine, hello. My name is Dominique Bonswin, and I'm an Abenaki and French Canadian beadwork artist. I'm also the owner of CedarLily.com, which is an online bead and craft supply store. I'm here to teach you how to make a beaded strawberry pin. For more information on this initiative, be sure to check out www.nccpeterbro.ca. In addition to this video tutorial, I'll be hosting a check-in on June 21st through Zoom, which is National Indigenous Peoples Day. There, you'll be able to ask me questions about this project or about beadwork in general. Either way, I'll be there to make sure to help you with any issues you might be having with your strawberry pin or just to talk about what beadwork means to me as an Indigenous person in Canada. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you'll be there. But in the meantime, let's jump into the tutorial. Let's start off by going through what uh, comes in the kits that are provided for this project. Um, so the first thing you'll notice are the beads. Um, so you have some red beads, which will be the body of the strawberry. These kind of transparent yellow topaz beads, which are going to be the seeds, as well as these dark green beads here, um, which are going to be the stem and the leaves of the, f of the strawberry. Um, so in your kit, you also have uh, two needles. I only have one on my beading mat, but you have two. You also have a small spool of thread. I'm going to be using my big spool of thread, but yours should look something like this, um, as well as a little pin, which we're going to use at the end of the project um, so that you can wear it when it's done. Um, you'll also see a piece of paper with the design. So this is really important. A piece of stiff white felt, which we're going to use as our beading foundation as well as a piece of black stiff felt, which we're going to use as our backing. Um, typically, people can use um, all kinds of different materials for backing. You can use um, a lot of, you'll see a lot of people use hide. Some people use fabric. Some people use like an artificial leather made out of vinyl. Um, just to keep costs low, we're going to use some black felt. Um, so that's what, and as well, you'll also have um, a small beading mat. So this is the size that you should receive in your kits. Um, the only thing you're going to need that's not included in the kits are a pair of good scissors. I use two different um, types of scissors when I do beadwork, but any kind of scissors will work just fine. Um, all right, so let's get started. I'm going to teach you, um, we're going to be doing the one needle flat stitch beading technique, which means you only need one needle. Um, it's relatively simple, uh, but it does take some getting used to. So if your beadwork doesn't look like mine right away, don't give up. You'll get there. So the first thing I'm going to, we're going to go through is how to tie a knot with your thread. So we're going to start off by cutting a piece of thread that's approximately the length of your arm. So you don't want it to be too long um, because then you're going to be pulling your thread through a lot of times um, and that can lead to shoulder injury um, and we don't want that. So work with a relatively short thread. Um, you can always add more. Once your thread is um, through your needle, we're going to make a knot. So one way that I like to do it is, um, so when you put your thread through your needle, you always have a short end, which I call the tail end of your thread, and a long thread, which is your working thread. And since we're not doubling it up, um, I kind of just, we let them flop around. So that's, the tail end will always kind of just be hanging out. So one way to make a knot, um, which isn't always the easiest, you can make any kind of knot, but I'm gonna show you what I do. Um, is I take my needle and I take the working end of my thread, so the long end of my thread. I put them parallel. Whoops. I don't know if you can see my thread and my needle, but I put them parallel but pointing in opposite directions. So in this hand, I have my needle and it's pointing that way. In this hand, I have uh, the end of my working thread and it, the end is pointing this way. So they're parallel. Um, so technically, the thread would make a loop here. Um, and I'm going to bring them together and pinch them together. So just like this, I'm going to grab my working thread and wrap it around the end of my needle about 10 times. Just like this until you kind of have like a little bit of a ball forming right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have a bit of thread buildup right here. So then I'm going to pinch that section and push the needle through. Sometimes you've got to 
give it a little tug to get through, but I'm still holding on to that wrapped thread and I'm pulling the thread all the way through. And then once you get to the end, it makes this perfect little knot. So if that kind of knot um, doesn't work for you, you might have to try it a few times. I think it took me about four or five times to get this when I first learned how to make this type of knot. Um, but you can make any kind of knot that's gonna stay in place and not go through your fabric. So if you know how to make another knot, um, by all means do it. You just want one knot on one piece of thread at the end of your thread. So I have a knot at the end of my working thread. My tail end of my thread is kind of just hanging out. Um, and we're gonna tack down the design onto the foundation. So I'm gonna take my design and my white piece of felt and I'm gonna lay them one on top of the other. So if your design is kind of flopping over your felt like this, you can trim it if you'd like. Um, as long as the strawberry itself is on the felt, that's what matters. So we're gonna be tacking down this design. Uh, what's important to do when you're tacking down the design is not to cross your thread over into the pattern. Um, you'll see what I mean once I get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is from the bottom, I'm gonna pierce through the foundation and through the paper until my knot stops me from pulling. So I just pull my thread through and my knot stopped me right here. And then I'm gonna tack this corner down. So I'm just gonna go right back down, right next to where I just came out of from the paper to the back side like this and pull that through. Oops. So now I have my knot and my thread hanging out in the back here. Um, and then, so I'm gonna do this in every corner, making sure that my thread doesn't cross my design. So I'm gonna go to this upper corner from the back to the front here. You don't have to tie a new knot every time. You just have to tack down the corners. So you can use glue to do this, and I'm going to the next corner here. So I'm making a square, basically. Um, you can use glue, oops. You can use glue to tack down your design to the felt. However, glue can make your needle um, like not glide as well through the, f the backing and the paper. So I always like to just tack it down with thread and then when I'm done, um, I just cut it out. Okay, so I have all four of my corners tacked down. And if you look at the back, my knot is here and my stitch kind of goes from corner to corner and ends in this last corner here. We're gonna do a really loose knot here um, just to, to secure it in, uh, but it doesn't have to be a good knot because we're going to be cutting it out later. So I'm just gonna pass my needle through a bit of the felt. So I'm kind of doing something kind of like this um, and pulling my needle through, but not all the way. So I'm putting, pulling my thread through, I keep getting caught on my scissors. Pulling my thread through until I have this little loop here. When I have this loop, I'm gonna pass my needle through it twice. So one, two, and then pulling that tight right up against the felt there. So I have this little finished knot right there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. You can leave a bit of a tail for this knot just because it's not super secure. Um, yeah, and because we're gonna cut it out later. So now you're ready to start doing beadwork. So we have our design tacked down to the paper. We still have a lot of thread left on our needle, so we're gonna go ahead and make another knot. So I'm gonna show you how to make that knot again, but you can go ahead and make any kind of knot um, that you want on this tail end right here. So I'm taking my needle as well as my working end of my thread and I'm putting them parallel like this. Oh, let me move the design so it's more contrasty. I'm holding them like this and I'm bringing them together, pointing in opposite directions and pinching them together. I'm, with my other hand, I'm grabbing the working end of the thread and wrapping it around my needle multiple times. So it doesn't matter which way you wrap as long as it kind of builds up. So it, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of building up right here where near where I'm pinching. So once I stop wrapping, I'm gonna grab my hand that I was wrapping it with and pinch that little wrapped section of the thread here and push my needle through where I'm pinching. 
And then once you go through the eye, sometimes it can be a little tricky. You gotta give it a little eh, tug sometimes. And keep pinching and pull your thread all the way down, all the way through. And then you have this nice little knot. You're ready to start. So once you have any kind of knot, again, whatever knot you did for your foundation will also work. Uh, as long as your knot can't go through, or so as long as your knot is bigger than your needle. Um, so like I said before, we're going to do the single needle, needle uh, flat stitch beading technique. Um, there's a lot of different techniques that exist out there. This is the first one I learned, and so I figured it was a good one to teach you. So what we're going to start with, actually, is we're going to do the outline of the strawberry here. Starting from the green point here and going all the way around, or this way, it doesn't really matter where you start, but we're going to do the strawberry outline. So the first thing you're going to do is, from your foundation side, you're going to pierce your design from the bottom to the front, right where you want your beads to start. So I pierced mine right where the green and the red meet on the design. And I'm pulling it through so that my knot stops it here. So um, based on your comfort level, you can pick up as many beads as you want. I recommend not picking up more than four at a time. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be doing two or four at a time. Um, I'm going to start with two just to give you a general idea of what one needle uh, flat stitch is. So I'm going to pick up two beads, red beads, of course, because I'm doing uh, my strawberry. And I'm going to let them go all the way down to the end of my design. One thing that's really important to remember when you're doing um, flat stitch beadwork is not to push your beads so hard that they, they don't lay flat, they don't lay the way they want to. You really want them to be free flowing um, and not crowded. So you don't want to shove beads where they don't fit. It's better to actually have a gap than to do that. So I'm letting the beads kind of go to where my thread's coming out of and I'm gonna place them. So I'm holding the thread with my thumb here to place them where I want them. You can see you can kind of manipulate it that way. So I'm just going to place them like that. I'm going to push them a little bit um, just to sh see where they would naturally fall without making them flop. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pierce on the edge of the design right where my second bead finishes. So I'm going to be piercing it right there. I'm going to push my needle through and pull it through from the back. So just like tacking down your corners, you kind of have a similar situation going on here, except your beads are tacked down here on your design. So from here, we're, this is always the trickier part, but once you get the hang of it, um, you'll get used to it. You wanna push your needle through to come out between your two beads. So I don't know if you can see that, but my needle is coming through on the line and between those two beads I just added here. So I'm gonna pull my needle through there. So my thread is currently coming out of the paper between these two beads. I'm gonna pass my needle through that last bead, the one that's pointed towards where you wanna keep going. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of tension here so that it stays put. So this is our first this is that was one stitch so from here my thread is coming out of that second bead and it's in a perfect position to add two more beads so i'm going to pick up two beads and do the same thing i just did so i'm going to lay them flat bring them all the way down use my thumb here to pinch the paper and the thread together and kind of guide the thread where i want them to fall so um, so I now have four beads, but the last two are still kind of free flowing on my thread. So I have four beads here. I'm going to take my needle and pierce the paper in the foundation right where that's that last bead, right in front of that last bead, right there. So I'm going to pull it through all the way. So you're tacking down those new two beads from the back towards the front. I'm piercing, poking my needle between the two newest beads we just added. 
So my thread is now coming out in between the third and fourth bead, the two newest beads. I'm bringing my needle and I'm going through that last bead we just added. So as you can see, we add two beads and we go up between the new two beads. So we're always kind of doing this kind of loop. So you add two beads, go down, come back up, and then go through that last bead. So I'm going to pick up two beads. Let them drop. I'm pinching my paper and my thread to allow them to fall where I want them to. Kind of using my needle to place them where I want them, but not pushing them so that they crowd, just kind of giving them light little taps that they lay flat. I'm poking the felt and the paper at the end where I just added those two beads, pulling the needle to the back. And then bringing my needle between the two beads I just added and pulling it through to the front and then passing my needle through that last bead. So you just keep doing that over and over again until you're done your outline. Okay, so I've finished the outline of the red part of my strawberry. Um, and as you can see, my thread is coming out of that last bead. Um, so, and they're tacked down. So I've put on my last two beads. I went down through the paper under my felt. I've come up through the last two beads and poked my needle through that last bead so that I'm in a position to continue. Even though I'm gonna finish it here, um, I wanted to be in this position to make sure that all of my beads were equally tacked down. So now I'm going to show you how to um, tie off your thread. Um, some people will just start the next section of their beadwork with the same thread. You can do that. However, I strongly recommend to tie off um, your thread at the end of each section because if you were to make a mistake in the next se section and have to cut it out, um, that's really not going to be fun because you're going to have to redo every single section attached to that thread. So um, at this point, what you're going to do is bring your needle down um, through the paper and through the felt, pull it through, and we're going to make a knot. Um, this is what we would do at any point if our thread gets too short as well. And to me, too short is from the tip of my middle finger to the base of my wrist. So any thread that's about this length, I'm going to tie off um, because it's not fun working with a thread that's too short. So to um, tie off your thread, my thread is now coming down underneath. Um, I'm going to poke my needle under the last stitch. So it's kind of hard to see because it's white on white, but I have a little stitch of thread right here. I'm going to poke my needle through it and grab a bit of felt while I'm at it. So my needle is kind of here. We're going to do something similar to what we did when we tacked it down. So um, I pulled it through a little bit, but not all the way so that I have this little loop. I'm going to pass my needle through this loop twice to make a little knot. I'm going to pull that and make sure it's really, really tight against my felt. And I'm going to go ahead and do that again. This time going under that knot I just did, picking up a bit more of the felt and doing the exact same thing. So pulling it through so that I get this little loop and then passing my needle through that loop twice. One two, and then pulling that tight. At this point, you can cut that thread pretty close to the felt. You want to leave a little bit of a tail, just so that you don't cut your knot, but, um, but you, you can cut it pretty short. So now that your um, outline is done on the strawberry part, you've tied your knot, you've cut your thread, um, we're going to start doing the outline of the leaf part of the green here. We're not going to do the stem just because that'll be one row of beads, but we are going to do um, the outline of these kind of quick curves here. So um, 
Also, if your um, strawberry outline isn't perfect, like as you can see, I have a few beads here um, that aren't perfectly in line. That's okay. When we start to fill it out, it'll push them out and it'll make them look a lot straighter. So I'm just going to remove my other thread because it is a bit short and I'm cutting a new thread. So again, you can start um, a new thread at any point when your thread gets too short or when you finish a section. Um, if, you fin if you were to tie a new thread um, like in the middle of your strawberry outline, for example, you would want to make sure that when you poke your new thread back in that you're coming out of beads. That way um, there isn't like a visible gap where you started your new thread. So um, if I were to finish my thread here, I would make sure that I'm popping up a few beads back and then going through those beads before I continue on. So I'm going to make that cool knot again. So my working thread and my needle are parallel, pinching them together, wrapping them around the needle. Do, 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 do. Pinching the part that's wrapped and pushing the needle through, giving it a little tug. Oops. Tug here and then dragging the needle, dragging the knot all the way down the thread. So this one wasn't perfect, but it'll still work just as well. Um, okay. So for this section, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, not totally on any of these points here. I'm actually going to start kind of in the middle of this top line here. And then, um, and then I'm going to go in and do this and finish back up here. So I'm just going to poke my needle through right on the line there from the back to the front so that my knot is right here touching the felt. And I'm going to do the same thing as we did for the outline of the strawberry. So pick up two beads, kind of place them where you want them, poke your needle down right at the end of your last bead there. Oops. Pull your thread through and then come back up through those two beads from the back and then through that last bead and pulling the thread all the way through. So I'm going to do that until I get pretty well all the way around. So when you approach a sharp um, corner as I'm getting here, it might be easier to just start adding one bead at a time. So what you would do here is add one bead and then tack this down. And then when I tack it down, I'm going to come up um, two beads behind just to make sure that they're all being tacked uh, proportionately. So coming two beads behind and then I'm passing through those two beads just to make sure that that bead I just added is really going to stay in line with the rest of my beads. So now I'm looking at this design and I'm seeing that I can't really turn this corner without um, making it look crowded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke my needle down and I'm going to start a new line just as I would anywhere else. So I'm going to poke my needle through just where I want to start here and keep going. So I'm adding two beads. So it's like the beginning of a new line. Adding two beads, poking, and then coming up between the two and continuing here. So I'm going to be starting a new line at every peak. So um, up here, down here, up here, down here, up here, and down here. This one we might be able to turn around, but it is very um, narrow, and your beads tend to not really look very good. Um, if you turn them too much, you'll see the thread in between, so it's better to just start a new line um, like here, but we'll see how it goes when we get there. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. So now I'm still doing two beads at a time, uh, and the reason we're doing two beads at a time for the outline is that it does make your beads um, a little bit tighter than if you were to do three or four at a time. 
when we start filling, uh, particularly the inside of the strawberry, I'll show you guys how to do um, the four bead method. Uh, it does go a little bit faster and but it doesn't look as clean, um, but that's okay because we're not doing an outline. But at this point, we're gonna stick with the two, two bead method, and then when it gets a little tight, we're gonna switch to one bead. So the leaf part of the strawberry is definitely gonna be the hardest part because it is such fine detail, but we're gonna do our best. Okay. So I'm coming to the end here. I think I'm gonna add one more bead. I'm just gonna go through. I'm gonna add one more bead there. I'm going back two beads when I add one bead and then through those last two beads just to securely tack that down. And I'm tacking it down here. So now I'm gonna start a new line and I'm gonna start it around right there. So I don't know if you can see where my needle is coming out of. It's not actually at the top of the peak because I'm worried that it's gonna get crowded. So I'm starting it a bit lower, um, but my lines are still gonna connect just because beads are kind of bulky. So see, there, if I put my beads here, um, it doesn't look like there's gonna be a gap. So pick up two beads, push through um, at the front of that last bead, come up through the two beads, and then poke your needle through that last bead. So I'm just gonna go ahead um, and fill out the rest of this outline. As far as I'm concerned, it's gonna be the same thing all the way down. I'm gonna go down here, start a new line, come back up, start a new line, go down, start a new line, come up, start a new line, go down, and then connect here. And I'll tell you what to do once we arrive here. Okay, so I'm just about to finish the outline of my strawberry leaves. And they fit perfectly, my beads. So at this stage, you might need to only put one bead or two beads, but you want to make sure you're not crowding it. So even if there is a little gap, it's okay. Um, I did not have a gap, which is very rare. So I'm just finishing off this. So this is the last bead I added here. And my thread is now coming out of that bead. So just to finish this off, um, I'm gonna run my needle through a few beads, just so you can't really tell um, where it ends. So I'm going through four beads here. And then I'm gonna poke my needle down in the back and at this point if you're happy with the way it's look it looks um, you can tie your knot as I did before I'm just looking at mine now and I notice that this end of this leaf here is not as pointy as I wanted it to be so I'm actually going to come up through any set of beads it doesn't really matter I'm running my needle back down and I'm gonna add one bead to this row this isn't necessary, this is just because I didn't poke it um, far enough on my design. This will give it that pointy, pointy look that I want. And then I'm just gonna secure that in by going back two beads and passing through the last two beads and tacking it down. So now we're ready to um, tie our knot again. So um, we go under the thread, pick up a bit of the felt. You can go under the thread of any stitch. Um, and then you pull it through, but not all the way through so that you have a bit of this kind of loop. And then pass your needle through that loop twice. One, 
two and pull it tight. And then we're gonna go again, do that again, pick up a bit more felt this time and go under that knot. You don't wanna go through your felt, but you wanna pick up a bit of the felt. And one, two through the loop and pull nice and tight here. And then you can cut. So now we have the outline of our strawberry and the outline of our leaves. I think the best thing to do next would be to um, fill in the leaves. And the reason for that is that your outline will be a little bit loose and flimsy. Like you should be able to kind of push it around a little bit. And I don't want the shape of these leaves to look weird if we're pushing the red beads against it. Um, so we're going to do the harder part of this strawberry and fill in um, the green space of the leaves. So I'm going to take a new thread. I pinch the thread and then wrap it around my needle until you have a bit of a bunch up there. Pinch the bunch, pull the needle through, give it a little tug at the eye. And then pull it all the way down. Perfect. Okay, so now um, we're gonna fill in this green part inside of the leaves. So I have my new thread ready to go. I've made my knot and it's on my needle. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start filling the biggest spaces um, in the leaf. So I'm gonna start in this corner here. So when you're filling, it's really important that you remember not to crowd. And what that means is don't try to squeeze in beads where they won't fit. So um, my needle's just coming out here and I'm picking up two beads. We're gonna do the same thing as we did with the outline just because these are pretty narrow spaces. Um, so we just wanna take it easy with filling this section. So as you can probably see, my beads don't fit all the way into the corner and that's okay. I'm just gonna put them where they do fit and tag them down there. We're using the same system as the outline here. So coming up through those two beads and then pulling through that last one. And then I'm going to pick up two more beads. So your, your leaves might look a little bit different, so you may need to fill um, in a different pattern or start at a different spot, and that's totally okay. I'm just going to make a line here where my beads are going to fit for sure. And then we're going to go through again and not squeeze in beads, but place them in a different um, at a different angle so that we can fill as much of this as possible. Okay, so after this bead, I think that's where I'm gonna stop. Okay, so I'm just gonna push this down underneath here. Okay, so the next section, I don't think we could fit beads here yet. I'm gonna fill in this big section right here and I'm gonna start down below. So I'm picking up two beads. And I'm letting them go where they fit. So this pretty well fit in the corner there. Tacking them down. Coming up between the two and going through that last bead. So I'm just going to fill this section up. So I do want to make sure that this is um, following some kind of line. I don't, like some people can, you can fill it however you'd like. I'm going to continue this line even if it means making another gap. So my line's going to go here. And there's still going to be a bit of space there and that's, that's totally okay. 
I'm sorry if you can hear people upstairs. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I've been lucky. My beads have been fitting into my spaces quite nicely. It's not always the case. So I do think I have space for um, another line here, right in the middle. So I'm going to actually start this one right up here, right next to where I just finished. And work my way down. And if at any point I feel like my beads don't fit, um, I'm going to stop. So I'm going like this, poking through my two beads between the two, and then, oops, and then through that last one. And I might be able to do a line here, but I'm going to finish this side of the strawberry first. So I want to definitely put a bead in this blank corner right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to poke along the edge of um, my outline, kind of in the middle there. And I'm poking my needle through, and I want to find a bead that's kind of narrow. This one looks like it would work and place it in the a different direction. So I'm putting it, I'm kind of like squeezing it into this space here. Not squeezing, because you don't want to crowd, but that bead definitely fits in there. So I'm tacking that individual bead down. So now that gap is filled. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I can probably fit um, two beads there. So I'm poking along the edge of that top line, looking for a pretty narrow bead and then I'm going to poke it in in the other direction. So as you can see here, I'm just filling in um, the beads wherever they fit. I'm going to be placing the beads um, depending on their size, because you can see some of them are thicker than others, in a certain direction based on how much space I have left. Now, if there's any kind of resistance when you put a bead in a certain spot, it doesn't belong there. Um, you really do not want to force beads in. Um, so yeah, just be conscious of that. You don't want to crowd your beads. You just want to make sure you're filling in the gaps that are the size of a bead. It's okay if there's a few gaps in your beadwork. Um, you likely won't see it once it's done, but you will see it if it's crowded. So just try to keep that in mind. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep filling out these leaves. Okay. So now I'm done filling out the leaves, I'm going to do um, a row of two of beads right on the stem here. So just as you start a new row, just before I tie off my thread, because I'm pretty happy with the way my leaves work, um, I'm ready to tie off this work. But I'm just going to finish my little stem here. So just as you would start a new row, poke from the back, put two beads, go back down under your felt at the end of the second bead, and then back up through the two beads and then through that last bead. And then pick up two beads. So I do think I'm going to make my stem two beads wide. So I'm going to do a second row next to these beads here. Okay, so our stem 
it's just about finished. I just have to tack down that last bead. There you go. So now that my thread is at the bottom, I'm going to do um, that same kind of knot that I mentioned before. So go under any stitch nearby, pick up a bit of felt, um, pull your needle through and then pull it, but not all the way until you have a little loop and pass your needle through that loop twice in the same direction. Pull it nice and tight and then go back under it, picking up a bit more felt here under the knot, pulling it through, but not all the way loop. and then going through it twice, making sure that's nice and tight. And then we're gonna cut this. So one thing you do wanna make sure when you're doing this kind of beadwork is that your stitches are never going to be outside of your outline. So you would never wanna drag your thread from here to the end of your stem because then when you're gonna cut this out of the felt, you're gonna have to cut your stitch and then your beads are gonna fall off. So now that we have our outline of stitches here, you definitely wanna stay within these lines with your stitches because eventually we're gonna cut this right out of the felt. Um, so now we're ready for the final step, which is filling out our strawberry. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make lines and we're gonna go in rounds. So we're gonna go around and around and around and around. And um, it's the same process as the outline. And then enter, like whenever you feel like putting a seed, you're gonna just pop a seed there. So we're gonna do some lines. You can pop some seeds. I'm probably gonna try to put the seeds um, where they are on this paper because I do think they're properly spread out. Um, but you can put seeds whenever you'd like. So I'm gonna start a new thread because um, mine was getting a little short. And threading my needle. And I'm making my knot. So there's always a bit of a Harder to end there. Okay. So once you have your knot made, you can go ahead and start filling in your strawberry. Um, I'll show you how to do the four bead method at this point. It is a bit faster um, and it's perfect for filling in this kind of surface. So, okay, so for the four bead method, um, I've picked up four beads on my thread here. And I'm gonna tack them down the same way as I would um, the two bead method. It is a bit trickier to get them in place, but they do end up like falling into place perfectly. So I'm just using my thumb to kind of place them where I want them. And I'm tacking down at the base of the fourth bead I added there. And then I'm gonna come up between the second and third bead. So in the middle of those four beads here. And then through the last two beads right there. And then you can kind of push it down a little bit to make sure it's flat. Okay, so, I'm so I've added four other beads, four new beads onto my thread. I'm holding my thumb where I want them and I'm pushing down at the end of my four beads. And then coming up through that second and third bead I just added and then through those last two beads and pulling that tight. I'm gonna add a seed here. So that's one, two, three, four. So one seed and three reds. And then placing them where I want. Pushing my needle down at the base of the fourth bead I just added. up through the second and third bead, and then through those last two beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill um, most of this area up, and then I will be right back. So now our strawberry is done, um, and we're going to tie 
the back here, tie off your last thread, just as I've mentioned previously, I already have one done, so I'm just going to do the second one. One, two, tighten that all the way, and cut your thread. Okay, so now we can go ahead and cut the thread off of the four corners from the when we tack down the paper when we tack down the design to the felt so we're going to cut those four corners and just pull that thread out if it doesn't want to pull out here my knot's pretty tight in there um oh i got it you don't have to pull it out because we are going to cut the strawberry out so it's not a big deal um but at this point we're then going to start ripping the paper and pulling it out from under the beads. So you just want to make sure that you're ripping the paper, you're pulling it outwards this way and not upwards like this because you really don't want to pull um, any threads. So I make sure that I'm holding the beads near where the paper is ripping and I pull the paper out underneath just like that. So as you can see, a bit of the color from the design is coming off, and that's perfect because my beads are laying flat right on top of there. So especially around the stem, you want to be careful when you're pulling so that the beads don't get um, too loose. And then, um, as you can see, I have a bit of paper left here, here, and right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull those little pieces out. If you have tweezers, that can also help pull out the little little bits in the corners. Um, but I typically just use my fingers. All right, that looks good there. There. Perfect. Oh, I just realized that I missed a spot here for beads. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm cutting my thread. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the shape of the strawberry um, and we're gonna leave about one or two millimeters around just to make sure that we're not cutting any of the thread. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're um, consistent in the width that you cut. So I'm just gonna cut a general shape around my strawberry to start. And then I'm going to go in, always paying attention to where my stitches are in the back. I'm going to go and cut a little bit closer. And then following more precisely, I'm going to have to use these scissors, the um, shape of your strawberry. So this is when like embroidery snips or fabric scissors are useful because you do have to kind of follow the shape and this one does have some pretty narrow corners so i'm doing this i'm also checking to make sure i didn't miss any paper You just want to be really careful not to cut your beads like this or the stitches in the back. Perfect. So now we have our cutout strawberry. We're going to take the piece of black felt and cut the exact same shape. So if you have a white marker, you can use it. I'm just going to hold my strawberry in place um, and cut through this way. So again, I'm going to cut a rough shape and then go in and detail. So I'm just cutting off any super obvious spots. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So this is kind of what it looks like when it's cut. Now we're going to um, measure out where we want to put our pin.
So if your pin is a little bit difficult to open and close, that's actually a good thing because then it's not going to fall out when we're done. So we're going to take the black felt off, but remember which um, side it lays flat on so that it lines up perfectly. And we're going to decide where we want the pin. I'm going to put mine just at the base of the leaves. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to place my pin just below where I'm going to want it to lay on the felt. And I'm just kind of going to make a little bit of a mark right where this piece and this piece would end up. So I can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I kind of used my scissors just to make a little bit of a mark. I'm going to fold my felt in half right on those marks and cut a really small incision right where those two pieces would stick out. So I have two little pieces in my felt. I'm going to go ahead and open this um, pin. So it can be a little bit difficult, especially because they're so tiny. And poke the needle through the first hole. Oops. Where's my hole? There it is. As well as the um, kind of piece of the pin that goes with that. And then through the other hole, I'm poking the other end of my pin. And I'm going to place this back onto the strawberry. So my pin is now where I want it. We're going to start what's called edging, which is adding beads on the outside of this where we tie the back to the front. So for this, you're going to need a piece of thread. You want it to be long enough so that um, it's workable throughout your whole project. Because it's not fun to have to restart your edge. You're going to thread your needle. And make a knot. Okay, pull your thread through. So to start your edge, you wanna hide your knot. So to do that, we're gonna pick where to start. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna work the body of the strawberry first. So I'm gonna poke my needle from the in-between layer. I'm gonna poke my needle through just the, the black felt. That way I can tuck my, um, my knot inside between the white and the black felt, making sure my knot is all the way at the end. And I'm ready to start edging. So I'm gonna pick up two beads to start. And I like working from the front to the back. So I'm gonna poke my needle from the front to the back, about one bead space away from where my thread was coming out of the knot. So. This is where my thread was coming out of the knot and I pulled my thread out about that far away. And then I'm going to kind of position my beads on the end and I want to go back up, up this way through that second bead I just added. So you can figure out which direction to go based on how your bead lays um, once you do your edge. So my bead is laying really, really flat with that edge. So from here I'm going to pick up one bead. And I'm going to start working from the back, actually, because I can see um, the distance that I want. So I want one bead distance away from that last stitch, poking towards the front of the felt, placing my bead where I want it with my finger, and going back up through that bead. So picking up a bead, oops, pick up a bead, figure out where I want my stitch, poke it through and then back up through the bead. Okay, I'm going to try to do one more set closer to the, the camera. Pick up a bead, poke through the two layers of felt, pull your thread through and then back up through your bead. So this might take a bit of trial and error. You're definitely going to have to work around and make sure that you're doing um, 
the thread in the right direction, it should look like this. You should see the thread between each bead here and it ends up laying flush with your felt. So through the felt, both felts here, pull, and then back up through my bead. Pick up a bead. Like that. That. And you keep doing that all the way around. So, this is definitely a trickier stitch, but once you get the hang of it, it gets easier. So I'm going to pause my video and come back when I get to this green spot here. Okay, so I've arrived to um, where my um, leaf meets the body of the strawberry. So as you can see, I've edged all the way around. It's okay if you see the felt between your beadwork. Um, that's kind of the beauty of handmade things. So if you cut your felt a little bit thicker than mine, you're going to see um, a white rim around your strawberry. But that's totally okay. So basically around the leaves, we're going to do the exact same thing, um, except I'm going to switch to green beads just because my felt is very thin. Um, I find kind of matching the color of the beadwork will make it pop a little bit more. But you can continue on with the red or um, if you have other colored beads, you can edge it in any color. But I'm going to go ahead and match um, the color of the leaves here. So I've just switched over the colors and I'm going to keep edging. So just a little reminder, um, when you're working through a sharp edge, kind of like the end of this leaf, you might have to put your stitch a little bit closer than one bead distance just because when it turns, um, your beads tend to kind of be more spread out. So see, I actually put the stitch much closer and my beads are laying exactly where I want them. So um, that's just a quick tip. Um, you're definitely going to have to do that technique when you edge the end of the stem here, just because it is um, quite narrow. So now my beadwork is flattening out, so I'm still um, doing one bead distance away for each stitch. Okay, so I'm getting really close to the corner here. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to try to force another bead flat right here because I don't think there'll be space. So I'm going to start working upwards. So what I'm going to do is I pick up my bead. And I'm going to pierce it actually right in the corner. And it might take a few tries to get this right. Let's see where this lays. Oh, actually, that worked out perfectly. So you see how that bead ends up laying flat with this edge here? That's what we want. We don't want it to look crowded at all. Even though my stitch was in the corner, that's, that's where it ended up. And so I'm going to do my next stitch a bit further away so that once it comes through the front, uh, my beads end up laying flat. Perfect. Just like that. And then the corners, the, the rounded, uh, not rounded, but the pointed corners of the stem can also be tricky. So you might need to try it a few times to make sure that your beads are laying where you want them to. I'm actually going to trim the felt a little bit here. So you can definitely see more felt on my stem, but I'm okay with that. So again, when you're doing the corners, you're going to have to pierce um, your stitch a little bit closer than when you're working on the body of the strawberry so that your beads end up laying next to each other like this. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So these are very fine details. This will definitely be the hardest bit to edge. Okay, so I'm working my way around my stem. I'm taking my time because I really do not want to... I don't want my beads to be crowded here. And I'm working with weird angles, so... 
Okay, one more, I think. Okay, so I've come to the end. And then I'm going to start working down here again on the flat part. And there we go. The hardest part of the edging is done. So I'm going to keep beading here until I meet up back with my red beads here. And I'm going to show you how to finish it off. Okay, so now I've come to a point where I've put my last bead on um, and my first bead is kind of just hanging out there a little wonky. So to finish off the edging, I'm going to take my needle and go through the top of that first, first, first bead that we put at the beginning of our edge. And that's going to connect our last bead to our first bead. Um, don't worry about making it tight right now, it'll tighten in one second. We're going to pierce the back of the felt under that first bead we added through the front just as if we were adding it as a new bead. And here you can tug a little bit and then you're going to go back under that bead and through the top. It can be a little tricky but if you try you'll get it. Here you can give it a nice little tug and you'll see that you can't really tell um, where your bead work started or ended. Then you're going to go down the next bead to the left, so that's the second bead we added to our edge. Poke the th thread through that same stitch you did when adding that bead. Okay, so I was having some technical difficulties with my camera, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch it over to my phone camera. Um, so my thread is now coming out of the bead next to um, that first bead that we had put on this was the last bead we edged and then we just tagged down this last bead and I went down through this bead and I'm gonna pick up some some of the white felt here just under that bead and tie a knot so same kind of knot as we were doing before so one and two And then I'm just going to hide this by going through the felt. Again, you can't really see. I'm going through the felt. And just pulling that through. And that knot will kind of hide itself in there. And then you can go ahead, grab your scissors, cut that thread. And we're done. You did your edging, your pin is set. Your beadwork is done. It's ready to wear or be gifted to a good friend. Thanks. Bye.